Right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Lundy's Wild Camp Stroke Bushcraft. So excuse me if I don't look at the camera. As you can see, I'm walking through a field, but obviously I'm keeping well off the form as, um, whatever it is, corn or whatever. I'm in the wheel track, so it gets drove on all the time, rather than walking along the edge there, because it's really dodgy at the minute. Uh, it's all overgrown because we can't hog anybody up here by the sounds of it because the big main woods has all been blocked off with loads of barriers. The people that own it don't want people in there anymore, including dog walkers. So all the main entrances have been uh, boarded up. So you still still get into there, like if you just go through the sides. I'm not sure if they've bob wired it yet. But anyway, enough waffling about their problems with their woods. I'm off up to my local permission woods. That I've got permission off the farmer to be there and do as and what I need to do within reason obviously but today I'm going to be testing out a new bit of kit that I was sent by White Hills Gear they produce some uh, well they say the lightweight tents I beg to differ but we'll go into more detail about that later on and the one I've got I've got a scout a scout what is it called? A Scout Baker tent. It's a one-man tent, um, camouflage. So what I'll do is, I've just got to get up into them woods up there. As you can see, I've got my notes in my hand because I'm useless at remembering things, aren't I? But I've just got to get up in them woods there. Hopefully it hasn't been getting trashed lately because it's been a long time since I've been up. And uh, yeah, it's good to be back out on me. Local Permission Woods, I'm out doing a solo. It's a glorious day of the day. It's very humid though. Wow. Forecast for later on is heavy rain, thunder and lightning storms. So bring it on. I'll put a little bit of excitement into it if it does happen. Plus, it's a good way to test out this new brick kit as well. Okay, it's supposed to have a good static head of 3,000 millimeters. So hopefully, it hasn't, it doesn't need any seam sealing by the looks of it. I've had a quick look at home, but hopefully it all holds up well. Otherwise, it's going to be a wet night if it gets rainy. But as you can see, it's stunning up here. Everything's gone nice and green. Things are growing. But as you can see, the clouds are growing as well. It's very still in here. But anyway, I'm heading up that way. I'll see you when I get across the stream. Right, hi everybody. This is White Hill Gear Scout Baker Tent. Okay, um, I'll go through some details about it later on, all the specs and everything. Um, so this is this is what it comes in it. A nice stuff sack. Okay, a little bit of a draw cord on it. I've just tied a, a ridge line in with some prusik nuts and and some clips on. Okay, just for my purposes only, they don't come with anything. So, it's got a nice little handle on the bottom, which I love about stuff sacks like this, because you can just grab a hold of the stuff sack and pull it off. And as you can see, it's a, it's a lovely camo type, okay. Um, I think it'll probably be blending quite well. You just have a quick look there, all right. It's, I've seen some people doing reviews on these and they've got the black ones and different colours but I, I really like this one and inside of it obviously I've had it out in the garden just to check it out and all that and see what I thought of it inside the garden and I thought I'd best do a proper review on it instead of just coming out and doing a review talking about it setting it up and then going home I thought let's wait for an opportunity when I think it's going to be a big downpour uh, we're going to have thunder and lightning hopefully later on uh, hopefully not not too serious like but hopefully a nice big pour down so we can see how good it is it comes with five guide ropes now we've attached a couple of them all kit already and uh, if i figures correctly it comes with 13 of these pegs these are a lot better than the pegs that come with the lanshan pro 2 uh, they're a lot thicker and longer as well with a nice tag on the end to pull them out the ground easy now so if i go out with my lanshan 2 pro i'll probably end up swapping them out for these because the pegs for the lanshan pro are crap 
all right and as you can see a nice little camo stuff bag so i say i've seen a lot of people putting these up and they say you need to take tracking poles out i'm sorry you're going to a woodland you don't need to take tracking poles with you they take tracking poles when you go walking on hills and things don't you so i've got some wood already cut from my previous video when i was here with rooney what i made my tripod with i've just brought them bits over here so i don't have to go looking for any wood but also what i'm going to do is i'm going to try seeing what it's like setting it up with just a ridge line only not using any poles so we'll do a couple of different ways of setting it up um okay then so here we have it this is the first time i've really put it up properly and um yeah it's not too bad obviously i'll do it again showing you how to put it up with poles and go through a step by step of setting it up i just wanted to do this bit off camera first but all i've used is a ridge line going from two trees and then i've used the the tie outs um onto the trees there that just fitted mine um, I wouldn't recommend using them to do round trees. I think the care, the cord is too too thin, and it's not long enough, and it's it's sturdy enough, like, but it's a bit thin, and it might damage the trees a bit. But anyway, let's have a look. As you can see, it's got a nice nice uh, bit of coverage on the top there. So if it's raining, you can just get it a nice bit of cover under there. Put a put a ground sheet down. Sit under there okay and it keeps you out of the rain obviously when i set it up properly the next time i'll have it so one of the corners is slightly down just for runoff of water otherwise i think it would pool in the on the top here and that would be an, uh, something that you don't really want okay but as you can see the tie-offs on here all right they have little tensioners on there as well so that's happy days like and then you've got the main cordage going off that i've tied around the tree there as you can see but well, let's have a look at the sides okay from the side view you can see the amount of room that you've got underneath yeah it's more than enough for one person or his kit possibly two I, it says it's a um a one-man shelter i think it looks big enough to if you were very very close to someone to fit two people in it would be tight though but we'll see once i get it set up again properly with all my kit in uh, down the sides as well what i like about it is it's got a little bit that comes down here like a bit of a skirt just to stop the wind brushing through okay it's got it on both sides there so that's that's good there the tie offs on the top here obviously to put your pole through all right i've there's a loop on here as well which i've used for me um my d shack along my prusik knot and it seems quite sturdy enough it's only got one lot of stitching on though so i'll be very aware that it has and just watch for the tensioning as you can see there's lots of little flies appearing so i'll get mozzy cream on soon but yeah it has a cordage coming from the sides there obviously put put around the stick and then tie it down to the ground coming around the back end it comes out a nice decent distance and then it's got a skirt at the bottom here and we'll show you from the inside it's a bit easier to see it's got a ventilation system all the way along the back there so we'll get the air pushing through because that's the way the wind comes from so that'll get a nice bruise, breeze sorry all the way through it also has a tie-off point here at the back which is ideal a nice triangular uh, thing it hasn't got double well it's got double stitching on here but i'd like to see a little bit more reinforcement on this because that's putting a lot of pressure on this seam here okay and same here as well um it could do with the black material overlapping this a bit and then having the crisscross stitching on and things like that rather than just the one because i think after a wear and tear of a long period of use that could free a bit and then you wouldn't be able to do that so that's that's another uh, thing i've picked up the stitching okay but other than that i like the material all right it's got a static head of 3000 um i'll go through all the specs later on when i sit and talk about it properly this is just a quick run through and obviously the same on the other side they've got zips so you can zip it down and make it into a normal tent for night time if you want to shut yourself away but i don't think i'll be doing that but yeah that's it set up there on the ridge line
as you can see. All right, and what I've done is just to give it an extra bit of loft in the middle, the little loop things that you use for rolling it up, I've just put it over the over there. I don't know how strong it'll be, but it's, it's not that much pressure on it, to be quite honest. It's just to keep it raised up a little bit more. I think the ridge line could have been put a little bit higher because um, it's, it's stooped right down. As you can see, I've put it over head height on this side and it's gone right down. So just to give it that extra little bit of loft, just to make these side skirts stand up a little bit better. See, when I put a bit of, bit of loft on that there, they go nice and rigid and that's what you want really not like that it's a bit flappy isn't it okay so that's that's the first look of it in any way set up with a ridge line so let's have a look and see how easy it is to pull up using sticks and we'll do right Let's have a little walk around and have a look and see what it looks like. Obviously, what you've got to be aware is you've got loads of guidelines coming down everywhere now, so it's a little bit of a trap hazard, trip hazard, sorry. So that's the only downside to it, isn't it, really? But other than that, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. It's a nice camo. We'll, we'll go off to the distance and we'll have a look and see how it gets picked up. But as you can see, underneath, all right, you've got this nice see-through mesh. All right, looks quite fine, so hopefully nothing will get inside. The, the ground sheet itself, okay, and the, the roof part is a 3,000 3, millimeter static head. So it's ample um, waterproofing to keep you dry. All right, uh, hopefully it doesn't need seam steel, because if it does, then I might be in a bit of trouble tonight. But as you can see, it's got a little bit of a skirt on here just to stop the wind from blowing to the side a bit when you're lying in there. Because, mate, to be quite honest, I'll be having the, the ceiling up all night. I, I won't be closing it in because I, like I like a little bit of a view when I'm out uh, in the woods. So happy days. And as you can see at the back there, I, let's just quickly take this in. As you can see, the zips come, it's a double double zipper which I like as well, obviously there, in here, here are the zips there, so it's got two zip, two, two way zip, so that's happy days. All right, take that all the way down, I don't want to keep it open too long because I've got loads of midges flying around. And as you can see at the back here, you have some more ventilation, cut the back, all right, a little skirt running off from that, stop the rain from falling in, which we're seeing getting put out on the other side, yeah. It's uh, the material feels really nice and thick as well, like. Um, we'll talk about that later on, or I'll put it up on the screen. But yeah, obviously if you've got trekking poles with you, which I don't bring into the woods to be quite honest, but if you've got trekking poles, you can put the trekking pole end that goes into the ground through the, through the hole there, and then pull that down instead of using sticks. But you're in a woodland, that's what you should be doing. All right. Let's have a look at what I'm using tonight. Okay then, so down in the corner here, this is gonna be me cooking and uh, me beers and things. So down here we've got, let's just turn the camera down a bit. Okay, so obviously I haven't got a water source up here cause it's polluted. Okay, so I've brought in this small, small water bottle which I've been not drinking much of it, to be honest. I've got a one and a half litre bottle there, which is an old orange bottle, and then two litres in the bottles. I've only brought two cans of lager where is the night, because I, I don't really feel like drinking loads, but I have got me Jack Daniels, and I've brought the fire one, which is absolutely lush. Okay, and then I've got me Baileys and hot chocolate for me last minute. Now I've got some new bits of kit here, I've got a titanium spork, which I'll go through it all later on in any way. Titanium pot and a titanium frying pan, which I won off what our woolly outdoor Scottish, sorry, it's a, it's, it's a bit more long-winded than what my channel name is. So I'll put it up on the screen, on the screen, sorry. And that's just a, a windbreak. And it's also got a titanium um, meths burner in as well, hence the bottle of meths. So I'm going to be cooking some dinner on that in, in, a, in a short while in any rate. But that's me, cook, that's me kitchen area sorted and then that's just got a few herbs and spices in for later on. 
because I'm going to be cooking a chicken, chicken stew and then I've got some sausage egg and bacon for the morrow morning with some porridge but I've got some noodles and sausage for later on as well well when I'm finished doing this segment as you can see inside absolutely tons of room now I didn't bring you along for this either because I, I, I was just trying to get it sorted but I thought I went and I've been buying myself quite a few bits of kit lately and I've been seeing a lot of lads who grew out hill camping and all that and they've got one of these and it is a flexi tail gear, flex tail gear, is that correct? And anyway, this year, it's a little pump, uh, and the trackology pillow up went, uh, the trackology pillar went up, but obviously it's got a press button inside of it, so it was a bit of a nightmare, so I had to blow it up again with my mouth. But the actual mattress, my God, I'm normally dizzy, out of breath and everything, and it takes ages to blow that up. No time at all with that. But I might do another video on that, I might not. But good little purchase. A bit expensive, another bit of electrics to worry about and charging up and things. But we'll see how that goes. <coughs> and anyway, looking in, because we don't need to open the net to get you looking in. I've got my bag and everything in there. First aid kit and fire kit ready. Me warm clothing for later on tonight. Gloves and hat, things like that. And then obviously my pee bottle down the bottom there. It's got a little hook inside as well, which I forgot to mention. So I've hung my lantern in there because that'll go there all night. And then I'll just be lying down there on that nice mattress. Obviously I brought a foil blanket because it's got no R value in it whatsoever. And yeah, just because it's summertime doesn't mean you're going to get any no coal coming through the ground. And I've brought out an old Van Gogh um, lightweight sleeping bag. It's a free season. Uh, I'll talk about that a bit later on, possibly I'll put it up on the screen or a kind of days. I think I'll just do that actually. And then over this side, I've got me, me main food inside of here for me breakfast and everything. I've got me snacks and that there. Uh, and then me power kit and everything over that side. So looking in there, there's absolutely tons of room. All right. Now I've got all, everything in there. Happy days, plenty of room to lie in. Okay. So it's very spacious and I'm very, very impressed with it. All right. Oh, also I forgot, I've got a, a little grill here that I've bought recently as well, which we'll look at later on as well. Kit, 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 kit. I'm very good at myself, you know. <laughs> but if there's anybody else out there that wants to send us some more kit, I'm a kit, I'm a kit, I love kit. I do, I love it. <laughs> All right, and anyway, so I haven't brought a chair or anything with us because I'm gonna make something. All right, and then, on this side, my tools I've brought out for partially overkill light. But as you can see, I've got an array of tools with us today. I've got my um, MSK surviving knife for us because it's a beast and it's just been resharpened. I've got my Boreo 21 saw, which is a fantastic bit of kit. Love it. Got my Laplander saw. Now I've brought out my little whole thoughts axe, all right, and I've got this little beauty. This was a, I think that's, this lever's a bit bent there, but this was given to us by a lad who I served with in the TA when he got rid of all his kit, he'd give us this, and it was in a right state, all right. It was getting rust, the edge was all totally knackered. It had been used and abused, it just never got kept after, but it had a, a crappy little handle on it. It's an army issue, as you can see. Oh, I've got to watch my fingers because that's a razor. Um, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but it's got its army numbers and it's got all the things about the steel and everything on there as well. It's not the greatest of steel that the British Army use on these old issued ones, but it's absolutely fantastic. Look at it. And the edge. Look at that edge. Now, my mate, Chris, the Northumbrian, has done this and it is absolutely fantastic. He's put a brand new handle on it, put new new um, brass pins in and a brass uh, lanyard holder in. He's actually added a bit more metal to the actual handle part, as you can see here. Obviously, you can see where the joint is there. He was a bit concerned about that, giving us it like this. He wasn't really happy, but I was like, look, it's, it's done. That's the job. And it is great. 
the handle's much better to hold and it's going to get used today for the first time. Now it's razor sharp, he's put a fantastic edge on it and I love it. So we're going to see how much how much damage this can cause later on when I'm playing with my toys. So basically, that's me set up and that's me bits of kit I've got. Okay then, so here yeah, we'll have it then. There's me dinner cooked. Alright, dead basic, easy, easy um, meal. Bit of pre-cooked sausage, put into some noodles. It's got a little bit of a spice to it. So what I've done here is I've just put the put the pan on a couple of little twigs just to keep it off the ground, stop all the crap stinking the it. Now, titanium, yeah, great, great little stove. Downside to it, where's the lid? There's no lid for it. How are you supposed to put it out? Unless you know the correct measurements for the fuel, you're just wasting fuel. So, you cannot blow them out, because that's just stupid and dangerous trying to blow it out. And uh, it's just wasting fuel, isn't it? But I suppose it's a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a nice little ambience fire while I'm <laughs> cooking me, uh, eating me food. So, at any rate, yeah. Love the love the weight of it. Just don't like the um, not having a lid for it. Maybe that's something that the people that make these should think about. Because that's the whole idea, isn't it? Having one of them snuffer caps, plus also having something where you can um, change the the amount of frame that's coming out if you don't want it to be ferocious. Right, okay then. So I've got me bits that I need. I've cut them down to size off camera just to save a bit of time. And I've got me two poles that I want here. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make them into a V. I'll just put that under there just so it makes it easier for to tie on. Actually, I'll turn it the other way and it'll be even easier. Okay. Well, it's nothing Nothing major, it's just something plain and simple to make. All right, well, I say it's plain and simple to make. It will be when I put it together. So basically, all it's gonna be is, it's like a V with a, a pole coming off at the back to make a bit of a backrest, okay? So all I've got here is a loop. The, the cordage is thingied through itself as well, all right? And all I'm going to do is, I'm just going to tie that off there. Wrap it around a few times, keeping it nice and tight. Once it's like that, start going around the whole thing. And just start going round. Yeah, but you know what I'm getting it, don't you? It's just to keep it taut, that's all, because this is the, the main part. Oh, typical. Two seconds. Right, unfortunately that was my wife on the phone. I've got a problem at home. I need to get back. So I will have to finish off this video another time um it's just it is what it is i'm afraid all right i'll catch you on the next bit right hi everybody right it's 20 to 7 at night i'm now back from being back at home i had to pack up everything as you can see camp's all gone uh back in me bergen so I had to get back for one of my dogs. One of my dogs is a bit poorly like and I had to take that to the vet, bless her. So, but the vets give her the all clear. Um, so what I need to do now, cause the heavens have opened up as I got in the car and I'm absolutely sweating more this go to gear on. But what I need to do is, I'm going to get myself set back up again. Once I'm set up, I'll bring you back. Right, here we have it then. I'm all set up. Bergen's in there, it's a little bit damp like. Put the Bergen's in there anyway. So hopefully it doesn't give off too much condensation. I think I need to put my boots back on and go around and tighten up the back because the back's a bit slack like. Uh, but all the bend areas set up, 
all my bits and pieces that I want inside the shelter are there. Waterproofs are folded up for the time being. Uh, that absolutely drenched and the legs are absolutely muddy as out off the field. And then I've got all my cook kit and everything there ready to rock and roll. All right, so, all right, let's put this down there because I have got my shoes off and I'm gonna sit on my mat like a little Buddha with my legs crossed and I think I'm gonna crack open one of my two cans. I wish I had a, grabbed a couple more. I'm gonna open it nice and light, nice and quietly because it's gonna froth, yeah. Well, didn't think I was gonna get back out the night, but cheers everybody. Yeah, keep a hold of that because no my luck, I'll spill it. Pardon me. Yeah, so this type of shelter. Yeah, it's all right. It's quick to put up <coughs> once you know what you're doing. You've got your poles and that ready. Always prep your poles ready, obviously beforehand, especially if it's raining, which I had my prep because I was I done them earlier, didn't I? But yeah, once you know how to put it up, it's a piece of piss, uh, piece of cake, sorry. Um, but I expected some thunder lightning later on. So the wood's going to be soaking now because it's all been out in the rain for a while now. But I'm sure I'll be able to manage to get, get a fire gun later on if I need one. It's absolutely red as. Um, I think I will have a fire later, like just for a bit of bush TV. But yeah, this is all set up nicely now. So back out, happy. It's nice and quiet. Just the sound of a few birds and the rain on the top. So it's a 3000 static head, so it should be ample for um, what we're going to go through tonight. So we'll soon see it anyway, won't we? And guess what I've got coming in there? Oh, look at the deer. Oh, all the deers are coming in. I don't know if you can pick them up down the bottom. I'm going to be quiet and still. Look at them. It's the same one. Possibly the same ones I've come through earlier. So I'm just going to sit perfectly still and see if they come up here. Oh, they're, they're legging it. Ah, oh, they're gone. Down the bottom. Won't all be along. Must have spooked them. That's twice in one day. Now I've had the deer come in. I've stopped down the bottom next to the river. That's the second time the deer have came in from that corner. So I think the next time I come up, I'll set a trail camera up there. Yeah. That may be an idea. That's, a, that's the, one of the downsides to a GoPro. You haven't got that zoom to get in there and catch things at a distance. Um, but you never know. It might have picked them up moving around on the bottom. It might not have as well, like. But in any rate, happy days. I'm absolutely boiling. It's a very warm night the night. I think it said it was about 23 degrees in the car on the way back. Well, definitely a good t a temperature that will keep you warm tonight in the wet. And it will probably cause a thunderstorm and lightning storm. And if it is, then we'll see how this holds up. Uh, right, quarter past seven. I need to tighten up some guide ropes and then I need to think about getting some wood prepped and getting it cut up and dried, stored underneath the top, keep it out of the rain. Well, I'll see you in a bit because I've waffled loads on this video. Absolutely up. It's going to come into the open in a minute. I'm heading to the shelter. 
watching it. Yeah, the wall, the wall will not pair them. Standing staring right at us, but I've got my screen in front of us. So I don't think it's seeing us probably because I've got my face covered. But it keeps on looking up at us. I wonder how close it's going to get. I see the other one coming into view now. I see it looking. Keeps looking, but I've got my black phone cover in front of my face. So the can't see us. It keeps looking. I hope my main camera's catching all this. The battery's nearly dead on it, like. I think it might have seen us there. It's looking. It's a way. I've spooked it. I moved my head and it's gone. Well, that was a canny bit of footage caught there. I don't know how much this GoPro caught it like, but it got quite close, about 150 foot away from us, if that. So, yeah. Obviously, I'm in full zoom, that's why my face looks so close to the camera. I can still see them walking around down the edge of the wood, so they might adventure back in if I sit still. It's not as if I'm going anywhere as I'll do anything. Okay then, as you can hear, the rain's getting heavier and heavier. It's still dead warm though. It's now quarter to eight at night, as you can see. Obviously because there's a storm coming in, it's getting a lot darker now. I still haven't even moved from this spot. I've just been sitting there, chilling. I'm sitting outside, 28, in a woodland, pouring down the rain, in a t-shirt, on my socks on. And, uh, yeah, happy days, like. So, I'm perfectly dry in the here, so it's, it's great. Um, I'm not sure whether to have a fire yet. Right, well, as you can hear and possibly see, the rain is getting really bad now. Um, it's not picking up. I've had to actually, I tried to snap the stick to make it lower because it was top heavy and it kept falling over. And I've had to drop this right hand corner right down because there was a lot, of, a lot of water pooling on the top. Now, I've got plenty of room to sit here. Um, which is, as you can see, well I hope you can see, and anyway I think this can, it's going to be light enough in here. It's just uh, a bit bright that light like. But anyway, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, it's lashing down now like. Um, I think I would be getting a lot more water hitting this if I wasn't underneath this tree canopy. Uh, so, yeah. It's still getting a test, but it's not getting a 100% test because I have got a good tree canopy behind us. But it's still quite warm, like um, 8 o'clock at night and it's still like 15 degrees. I don't know if you'll pick that up on the camera, like, but it's 15 degrees on this thermometer thing. Okay, it was 20 degrees about 10 minutes ago, so it has dropped 5 degrees. So, but what I'll do to have some... Uh, thunder and lightning light let's see what oh that's that's much better isn't it with that light on now this this new gopro set i've got up the setup i've got i mean is absolutely class like um i really like it and the light and everything's tiny it's about not 
less than a quarter of the size of my other light I used to have. My other light was about the same size as the GoPro Hero 7, so it just made everything massive. But this is, is obviously the whole unit together is big, but not massive, if you know what I mean. But yeah, um, I had to go out into the rain to sort that out, so obviously the, my t shirt soaking, but I'm warm. I've got a spare t shirt in my bag, and anyway, if I need to change it. You know, but there's no point in changing my t-shirt just yet. But the main reason for this video is obviously to get out for a night out camping, you know. But it was also to test this shelter that I've had sent out. And it's getting its test. Um, I didn't want to come out and do a review where I just come out, set it up in the woods, talk about it and then take it home. That's not a way of testing kit, is it? You need to get out and when I heard that was going to be some a possible thunder and lightning storm and heavy rain tonight that's why I, I really wanted to be out. Yeah, it's a, it's a damp night but it's a warm night. Don't need a fire. I'm not even going to entertain trying to start a fire. I am sitting outside in the rain cutting wood up to put a fire on. What I might do is I might find a video of just a fire and put it on my phone. <laughs> sitting, sitting, sitting watching false fire on my phone on some stupid app or something. <laughs> so, I'll just pretend I'm out, I'm out in the hills on the, in a tent. <laughs> you don't have fires when you're in tents, do you? <laughs> right, well, as you can see, the food's bubbling away nicely now. Oh, he's got to be aware that it's just on a tiny little perch, so I kind of gone too mad with it. But yeah, looking good. I think I should have put the chicken in a bit later, like, but never mind. Right, yeah. A little potato. Let's see if I can get it picked up without spilling the pan. See if it's hard or soft. Oh, I've got in there. Mmm. Got some lovely taste there off. Um, I put some chicken, chicken pot things in. Yeah. Ooh, that's that's warmed the cockles in my heart. That has. But yeah, food looking mighty fine. So I think about another ten minutes, and that should be done. And the fuel's lasting well as well. But as you can hear, it's still it's still peeing down out here. Oh. Yeah. Nice bit of greenage over there, look. Holy holy. Right. But uh yeah, it's getting damp underneath here now. I don't know if you can see the the state of the floor. It's uh, all the, obviously with the rain hitting off the ground, it's just bouncing on all the mud coming onto me ground sheet and everything. But obviously, if you look underneath it, it's a bit damp, like, right? but it's not, not mega. But yeah, nice and dry there, like, the heat off the, off the stove. <laughs> but yeah, it looks. Oh, oh, I've just scared the deer. There's deer down the bottom there, again. They must be wanting to come in here to get out of the rain. It's just shot off down the bottom there. I've just caught the back end of it running out. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to be plagued with deer the night. Nice one. Right, hi everybody. I hope you can see us all right. I've now retired to the inside of the shelter. I'm sat on me. I've got my jacket, just in case my horse is wet uh, or muddy. So I've got my jacket on top of my sleeping bag and I'm sitting on the air mat. It's so much comfier. I'm, my legs are fully stretched. I've got my boots off. I've got a, um, a, a stuff sack over the top of them just in case any rain gets into them during the night. But anyway, yeah, I'm sat here. My food's all done. It's looking absolutely 
splendid. Let's turn the camera down a little bit so you can have a look. It's absolutely lush. So I think I might have overdone it a bit with the chicken. The chicken's a little bit tough. I wanted it to be a bit more tender, but it's absolutely beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and chill out and eat this. Um, right, howdy folks. I've just been sitting watching a bit of bit of telly there. Bit of telly? Oh, I can't see a bloody thing though. I've torn my glasses off. Hi, I've just been sitting watching our hazy there on the um, Cape Raft Trail. I've enjoyed his videos so far. He's, he's a funny bloke, and he medic. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> he's a funny un. Hi. So he's he's got some good banter on him. Like I didn't like him when I first watched him, first started watching him. But I've really grown to like watching his channel. A fantastic channel. If you don't know who he is, outdoors he is. He's haven't lived like. Go over and check his channel. Like he's flipping hilarious. He's doing the Cape Raft Trail at the minute. I think he's on day six. I've just watched. Um. Just the things he comes out with as funny as out like. Um, yeah, walking with Wallace. I watched his um, Cape Raft Trail videos as well. Absolutely brilliant. Two different characters, totally different characters, but both absolutely fantastic uh, channels to check out. I'll go and check them out. Links might be in the description. All right. Um, yeah, so in any way, quite past 10. I'm just sitting chilling, um, having a Jack Daniels and Coke. This is the the Jack Daniels fire. It's like a it's like a bourbon. But I've just added a, a can of Coke with it like so. As you can hear, it's still raining. It's never stopped. Um I've just been checking the insides of the tent and down on me. Top right hand corner here. I'll see if I can get you swung round and put the speaker there. Hopefully it still works. Right, let's have a look. It was damp down there, but I think this is my doing and not the actual tent. I think what I've done is I've, I've made this far too tight and I've pulled, see there, you can see where's the, the stitching. I've pulled the stitching away because it's that tight this it's, it's really really tight actually far too tight and I think I've, I've overdone it I clean it all up like and it's it's still dry now like but yeah uh, watch what you're doing if you get one of these for the tensioning on the corners because it will pull the stitching away all right but you can I can feel it and you can see it it seems to deal seems sealed seems sealed so it is it is okay like but I'll have to reseal that myself. But I think that was my doing. But yeah. Um this other corner here is perfectly fine. It's nice and dry as you can see. It's a lot a lot slacker. I thought I could hear voices there. I wonder if someone's out hunting tonight. But yeah, I don't think you can see through the mesh. But yeah, it's dark. It's wet. But it's still warm. It's it's unbelievably warm. The shelter's held up well. I've just been physically checking all like where the seams are and seals and things. Like you've got this yeah, you can see it seems sealed because it's got like a it's got like a shade um a, like a, a shine to it, you can see it here and on here. Alright, on all the way along. So that's that's happy days. The material on the inside is all bone dry. There's no condensation in it, no nothing. Everything is fine and dandy. So I'm I'm impressed with it. Obviously, it's just that little corner, which is down the bottom there. That's given us a bit of jip. 
Well then that, happy days like. Right, good morning. It's 25 to 5. It's never stopped raining all night. Um, I'm nice and dry still, so that's happy days. <laughs> it's, it's what I was expecting, but and fingers crossed I stay nice and dry. I have got a couple of little bits of uh, water getting in, and but my sleeping bag's absolutely bone dry. I've got the frontage still wide open. There is a slight bit of condensation up above my head on the material, up here, alright. Um, there's the odd little bit where I think I'm getting tiny little bits of water now starting to appear on some of the seals. So, down the bottom here, where the mesh is, the tent sort of like come down a little bit. It needs to be up like that. So I think the water's just bouncing off the ground um, and then coming onto, onto the mesh itself. So, but there's no major problems with water on the bottom of the ground sheet. It's, it's damp a bit, you can see there in my hand, it's damp a bit, but it's nothing, nothing too much to worry about. A quick wipe with a cloth and that, that wipe up. But it's not something that you, that you really want to happen all the time. So it's just something to be aware of. The bottom corner that was leaking last night, I've had to clean all that up again. There was a slight little bit of stuff down there as well. So, yeah. And apart from that, that's it. Let's just put yours down. I've got one. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so. Considering it's been raining since I got here back again last night, um, it's never stopped. It's been constant, and it's held up well. It's held up really well, considering I've never proofed it. I've never done anything to it. It's come straight out of the bag, set up, and it's done what it's supposed to do. Back, but I'll just take you around the back now, and what I've done is. I've took the, the line up to a branch and then down over and that's lifted the back end and this bottom curtain much higher now and better. So future reference, change that cordage for another one that's longer um, and then that should be fine. But yeah, anybody using one of these, do that. It'll stop all the ingress of uh, water getting into the inside and I'll just show you quickly now because obviously everything's out of the way you can see how the mesh at the back there is now all totally raised up so no splash back from the ground is going to come and penetrate through it and all the crinkles have gone out of that corner as well so yeah definitely the better option for setting the back part up I definitely think so in any rate
Okay then, so there we have it. There's my breakfast. It's all still in the pan because I forgot to bring a plate with us. All right, the eggs are a little bit. Well, actually they are, right? Hmm. Let's try the sausage. Which bits of the knife? The um, Irish sausages, these Irish. Hmm. Oh, love Irish sausages. Are lush, and the bacon. It's just like. Hmm. It's got a nice crispiness to it. Yeah, happy days. So obviously, the pan's a small one, but it's done the job. You know, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting about this microphone down here and ah, apparently I'm a noisy eater so now the proof will be in the pudding because I've got a recording a bit so anyway I'm going to stop recording now I'm going to eat this and while my fuel's still going I'm going to get some water and I decided on the, uh, not to put my food into the pan because it would have made it greasy and then obviously my water will get greasy in there as well okay so anyway I'm going to switch off and I'll catch us in a bit. Right then. So I'm just about packed down now. I've been doing a lot of stuff off camera that you don't see. Okay. Like all the packing down, all the cleaning down of kit that's minging with mud and soak and wet, using all my towels and old t my t-shirt and things. And I've just got this just about ready to take down. I might be lucky but the clouds have just gone black as out. The wind's just picked up and it looks like it's going to bloody lash down. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my Gore-Tex gear on and I'm just going to roll this up. I wanted to put a ridge line up and get it upside down, get all the muck from on the bottom. But I think I'm just going to scrap that and just rack it away as quick as I can. So I kept myself sorted. But as you can see, I'll, I'll, I'll see, I'll get myself sorted, then I start waffling crap, I? as you can see, I've got it all nice and clean, it's all bloody dry as well, it's all dry, there's just a couple of leaves on the top there where they've been falling off the trees above us, but yeah, it's starting to get dark out there, it doesn't look it on the camera, but trust me, it has, it's just, it's just gone like dark, that's just a plain taking off, it's not thunder. So anyway, I'm gonna uh, slip me. Oops. I'm gonna get myself sorted. Try and get this pattern away before the rain starts. It looks like I might have a wet walk out, like, but I'm not bothered. Anyway, catch us in. To, catch it. It'll be a couple of seconds for you, but it'll probably be about 20 minutes for me. I've just felt the rain. I better get a move on. Catch us in a bit. Okay, that's me all packed away. I can see there's a nice dry patch where I was. Obviously there's bits of wood scattered all over the place, but that's where it's like in this wood all the way around. And anyway, as you can see, I've got bits all over the place. Bits standing up for the next time I'm here. All this will probably get dried out again. Um, Bergen on. I've had to put me shelter i've just hiding a stuff sack that i had spare for me clothing um i've just whacked it in there and then put it in the top of me bergen it's it's wet now and it's dirty so it needs to get aired out when i get back i've got a place at my house where i can put things up easy like so that's happy days but yeah um yeah a good a good night out different type of camping for me again not having a fire when i'm in the woods is a strange one excuse us with my angles and my camera because I'm holding the actual camera in my hand because it's going to go in my top breast pocket when I'm finished talking to you a lot so yeah back in my local woods good night out bit wet one but a good test of uh, a bit of kit so I say well I'm going to stand still where I tell you um, yeah so if you've enjoyed this please hit that subscribe button leave a comment Hit the bell notification, give us a thumbs up, all that shall all go. 
and if you would like to help support the channel i have a buy me a coffee down in the links below uh, please feel free don't be you don't have to if you don't want to but if you want to help the channel get get better kit and do better things go further afield um you know it, it all goes back in towards the channel in any way you will see some of the kit that i've been buying uh coming up soon that i've been getting money donated off other uh off subscribers uh you know so it's all went towards buying these things um you know because it is expensive it's expensive getting all this new kit and trying it all out but obviously it's something i want to do but if you want to help me do that then feel free okay and also don't forget i've got a facebook group as well okay the link in the description come and join us and join the other 400 and odd people i think i've got now in my group and you can post away all your pictures and any videos that you've got of your adventures out and about on the in the countryside woodlands sea whatever you do okay it doesn't have to be bushcrafting or wild camping even if you're out doing like walks with your families and things come and share them let let people see what you're doing if you want to share them that is okay and also i'm on instagram as well go and check that link out as well in the, the description okay lots of things <laughs> so in any rate i'm going to get myself away home through the long grass so i'm going to get soaked so i'll catch you on the next one i don't i think i possibly might be doing a stealth camp somewhere I'm not 100% sure yet. I've still got a tent that I bought last year uh, to test out as well. Um, so I might do a hill, t hill camp again. I'm not really sure. But anyway, till the next time, see you all later. All right. <laughs> Have fun.